Hello and welcome to this gameplay spotlight of Total War Three Kingdoms. I'm joined by narrative designer Pete to have a little look at what happens in the mid-game when the Three Kingdoms declare themselves Emperor and they clash for the crown. So we're looking at um, about 103 turns into my campaign here. I'm playing as Gongsun Zan and you can see that if we zoom up into the tactical map, I've taken like quite a big swathe of land here. So I'm just encroaching south of the Yellow River, taking a bit of Lo Yang. And we're in a huge war with Cao Cao and all of his vassals. You can see literally this entire clump of uh, territories is all owned by either him or Yuran Shu, his uh, coalition friend. So, so all of the... Yeah, yeah, literally pretty much all of the central plains and like half of the Southland as well. So okay. it's looking pretty deadly. Is Sun Jian uh, his vassal? Sun Jian is his vassal, as is Liu Bei. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that he does need to look out for if you go into ownership, Liu Bei actually owns all of this as well. What's he um, doing over there? Wow, well, he's a busy he, boy. He confederated uh, Liu Biao in one of the events. Oh, right. So we're, we're kind oh, of... Just took a little bit Yeah, we're seeing there. a little bit of a power struggle now because he's become more powerful than his vassal master. Mm -hmm. So we might see him declare independence in the future and maybe I could stoke those fires by offering to... Uh, Kicking it off, yeah, yeah. offering to help. So, um, so basically... The reason that we're looking at this part of my campaign is because if we look at our faction summary, you can see that we've almost hit the rank of king. And as soon as you declare yourself king, you're actually going to see that Three Kingdoms period kick off. Sometimes the AI will beat you to the punch. Someone will be able to clear that for you. Um, you'll also see if you're playing one of the governor factions that you'll actually have to wait for somebody else to declare themselves yeah, king. Yeah, as a governor, you simply you can't exactly. declare yourself an emperor. Like Too loyal to the hand, yep. so you have to take one of the seats of power after the Han has already abdicated from the throne. Yeah, it's only polite, right? Exactly, right? It, but it's Kong Rong, so yeah, yeah what would you expect? Um, speaking of Kong Rong, we've been attacking his territory, and I've got Zheng Fei here, one of my generals, moving into Taishan, where we're trying to take that trade port that's going to give us our last little surge of prestige. Push you over the edge. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to see that chain of events kick off. <laughs> so we will skip through the cutscene just to avoid any spoilers, uh -huh. um, but if we take Taishan now, we can see that all kick off. All right, so here we are. Um, we have hit the rank of king. From the borders of imperial territory to the very heart of the land, you have risen from humble beginnings. As king, you may feel unchallenged, but the wind must ever blow back the encroaching ocean. Nice words, Pete. Thanks. Uh, so Be vigilant. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, so we're looking at um, what happens now. We've actually declared ourselves king, which means that we've had a little name change. If we just uh, zoom on up, we can see that we are now the kingdom of Yan. Better so, than the Duchy. Yeah, exactly. And we kick that off. We can see that now... You have declared yourself emperor. Now it's time to prove it and lead China out of chaos. We're going to see some challenges from the throne here. So as we said, um, Liu Bei and it looks like Sun Jian as well, actually. Mm. Both too powerful for Cao Cao to keep control of. And they've actually declared themselves emperor. So this is probably um, the more fitting one because they were, of course, two of Those the three kingdoms. Are the two of the three kingdoms, yeah. Um, but of course, Yan being uh, one of our own making. And as, uh, as you can expect... Any of the factions that you select can make their own kingdoms. Yep. So we're going to see different power struggles come up. As we said, it's a sandbox game, so it's not always going to be Liu Bei and no. Sun Jian who go it's for the, your go three for the kingdoms. Throne. Exactly, it's not the three kingdoms. Yeah. We could have had, for example, Lu Bu who had Ma Tung as a vessel. Ma Tung vassals. was close. I yeah. think he was very like powerful. So there's there's a lot of different options that you could have um, could have gone for, but in this case, with Liu Bei's huge sway over territory. And um, with it looks like Sun Jian have, have got pretty much all of the southeast as well. So it looks like those were the two clear choices. And uh, Cao Cao's actually put himself in a, a difficult position here as well. Yeah, that's the danger of having quite a lot of vassals and that they have a relative amount of independence and can still sort of go around and do what they, kind of what they want. Mm. If they become more powerful than you, then you're in a bit of a bind. And it's also a, a quick way of declaring yourself emperor. If you've got that huge vassal, it's going to make you very untrustworthy, but you can just annex them, sway, uh, claim all of that territory for yourself, put that under your No one and likes... Exactly. Like ever. So you can see that we've declared ourselves emperor and we have these three seats of power waiting to be taken under our control. We of course start with one being our capital in Yubei Ping, but we have to seek out the other two capitals and that's going to be one of the objectives that we need to complete to be able to actually finish the game. Yeah, to win the game you require the three emperor seats and to have taken, I think it's 95 counties? Mm -hmm. it, either way it's a great deal of territory, so you can really cement yourself as emperor unquestioned. Yeah. It's uh, it's basically getting yourself to a point where no one could actually oppose you. Yeah. And um, one of the uh, interesting things as well is that Liu Bei actually started with his capital up here in the sort of northeast. But once they hit that kingdom rank, they're actually going to consolidate back to their most powerful yeah. uh, state. You can so you move can... your capital and advisable, as you can see that Liu Bei has done, to put it somewhat defensible, hidden away so you can't just run straight to it and take exactly. it. Exactly. And this is this is one of the, uh, the bits of territory that... Um, 
Liu Biao was under control when he confederated the two factions. Now he's got this strong power base in the southwest where he's actually right next to one of the other two kingdoms as well. So we can start maybe moving into that uh, territory. But we've put ourselves in a difficult position now because we have quite a lot of distance to cover to try and get to those two Quite castles. a trudge, really. Exactly. We've actually got two um, other ways of doing that with the new diplomatic option as well. So if we open up diplomacy with the kingdom of Shu Han, we can actually force them to abdicate their uh, their emperorship, essentially. Ask that this contender yield their position and recognize your blessing by the gods under the mandate of heaven. So once we've sort of beating them into submission eventually we'll get to a stage where they're they're too weak to actually be able to put up a fight against us anymore mm -hmm. and we can we can sort of leverage that position to try and speed things along yeah, a like bit this war has gone on long enough like you're just going to keep losing but yeah. why waste men and resources unnecessarily when you could just you know give in like, exactly and one of recognize my authority and one of the the big ways of um, helping that along is by taking that that seat of power mm -hmm. and once they sort of lose their position in the world that sort of um that rank of prestige that the other warlords saw them with, that's going to help to uh, undermine their position and get them down. So there you go. That's the, the Three Kingdoms period there um, in my save of the game. But of course, this is a sandbox game. So we're going to yeah. see quite a few different uh, kingdoms popping up. Um, we are, of course, going to be um, seeing a lot of those uh, stronger warlords like Tao Sao, like Liu Bei, who have that more, um, you know, a bit more of a, a waiting on them where they're more likely to, to pop up in the end game because they have a few events that help them along yeah and Sao Sao's well, his character exactly very good at yeah. these kind of warfare so you'll find that he'll probably be persisting quite a lot but ultimately you can see almost anyone yeah. getting to this end game with this power base and, we, and we've seen on the streams how just uh, especially when we've had to end the same turn twice just how much things can change based yeah. on that that one roll of the dice almost um, so we can see that Cell Cell here elected to just vassalize everyone around him and that hasn't actually worked out for him because him yeah, a little bit, yeah. yeah two of uh, of his and his allies vassals have now declared themselves emperor so um, he's in a bit of a tricky spot and I would be surprised if Cell Cell lasts much longer because you're bearing down on him Exactly, and yeah. he's got Swen Jun behind him and Liu Bei to the west, so might be curtains for Sao Sao. Yeah, so there you go. So, thank you very much for joining us. Um, pleasure. Keep your eyes and ears open for more Three Kingdoms content coming very, very soon. Uh, we'll be back with the streams uh, this week, I believe, as well. So, come and join us on twitch.tv for Sato or Official to watch all of those, or if you miss any, all of the VODs will be available on the Total War Live YouTube channel. Thanks, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>